bloodbath in Gulf Paris tonight as terror attacks exploded across the French capital. The deputy mayor said at least 118 people were killed. Other officials said 140 died, along with five attackers, and some reports ranged even higher. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. The wave of killing shattered Friday night in Paris as police and military raced to stop an all-out assault on the City of Light. At least six sites were hit, from a concert hall to a shopping mall to a restaurant, plus a soccer stadium. The concert hall saw the worst carnage, where at least 100 people died after gunmen seized hostages. A police assault there killed at least two of the attackers. Bomb blasts near the soccer stadium reverberated inside, where thousands of fans had gathered to watch France play Germany. I heard one bang, and then 10 to 15 minutes later, another. Bang, bang, two in one go. Then I heard another one outside. It was very noisy inside. French President Francois Hollande was at the stadium as well, but was quickly evacuated. Moments later, he addressed the nation, declaring a state of emergency and shutting the nation's borders. We must make sure that no one can return to carry out such acts, and at the same time that those who have carried out these crimes are also apprehended before trying to leave the country. In Washington, President Obama came to the White House briefing room as the attacks were still ongoing. Once again, we've seen an outrageous attempt to terrorize innocent civilians. This is an attack not just on Paris, it's an attack not just on the people of France, uh, but this is an attack on all of humanity and the universal values that we share. Uh, we stand prepared and ready to provide whatever assistance that the government and the people of France need to respond. Back in Paris, investigators began trying to figure out who was behind the worst attack on the city since World War II and how they carried it out. Here in the U.S., officials said there is no credible threat of an attack, but security has been stepped up at locations in New York, Boston, and Washington, D.C. For more on the attacks, we turn to reporter Kate Moody of France 24 Television. She is in Paris. Kate Moody, tell us the latest you have at this hour. Well, all eyes are still on the Bataclan Theater, where uh, this dramatic hostage situation has just come to an end about two hours ago. Uh, we understand that police uh, and forensic investigators are going in there and uncovering a really bloody, bloody scene. Uh, we, we've been seeing covered bodies coming out of that theater, uh, wounded people being taken to hospital for treatment. And, Kate, we know that there were, is it five or six other sites where there were attacks of, of a different nature? Yeah, the, it wasn't just this hostage situation going on, although that seems to have emerged as the most high-profile incident. Uh, the evening, the bloody evening began, if you will, at around 9 p.m. local time uh, with a series of explosions that were heard outside the Stade de France Stadium uh, where this soccer match between France and Germany was taking place. Uh, we understand that five people ha were, were killed outside of that stadium, uh, including potentially two suicide attackers. That's, that's what's being reported. That has not been confirmed by the police. Now, these explosions were heard inside the stadium, uh, but no one really realized what it was, and the game went ahead as, as normal. Um, separately, a few minutes later, there was a, there was a series of gunshots uh, and people who were killed outside a Cambodian restaurant in the 11th arrondissement of Paris. It's a really buzzing, uh, sort of hip neighborhood where a lot of people were out on the terraces. Uh, then this incident took place at the theater, where an American band was actually giving a rock show. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people inside that sold-out show, and the hospital situation then developed there. Uh, there were also reports, at least four other reports of gunfire in the city throughout the evening. It's not clear whether those were in fact related to this series of attacks, although the, I think we can say fairly safely the series at the, at the, the, the restaurant, the theater, and then the stadium do seem to have been related in some way. That's the impression that authorities have given us. Uh, we understand that in total, five attackers were involved. 
and have been neutralized. That's the word that the French prosecutor is using. Uh, they've also opened up an investigation to try and find out, you know, who these people are, who they may have been connected with. They are, we've not been given sort of the all clear signs of Paris, though, because there have been these other potentially related incidents. We don't know if the people who were involved in those have been have been taken into custody, have been neutralized, to use their word. Uh, so the city's still very much on edge this evening. Kate, is there any clue at all as to the identity of any of these attackers? There's not. Um, we've heard from some people who were inside the Bataclan Theater who said that they heard the attackers uh, mentioning Syria. Someone said they heard heard a, heard a cry of Alu Akbar, um, but that that's just individuals that we've heard from. There's no sense from officials yet that that could be any kind of an, a, any kind of a motivation. Uh, prosecutors have been very very careful not to take, make any and not to point any fingers, if you will, yet, uh, because we're really still in the very very early stages of this investigation. As I said, we're not even sure that we, that, that everything has been has been has been calmed down for the evening. So still very very much on. A lot of questions still still just beginning to be raised. A lot of questions for sure. And and given what happened in Paris just months ago with the uh, the Charlie Hebdo attack, uh, the the French newspaper, uh, where where a number of people were killed, we know security was stepped up in Paris, but clearly not enough to stop something as horrific as this. No, exactly. We've seen a, a fairly, in, I mean, a fairly impressive presence of uh, military personnel and police, just much more visible on the streets of Paris in the months since that Charlie Hebdo shooting, um, and you, you know, posted outside outside news offices, outside churches and synagogues and temples. Um, we've seen we've seen all that for months. A lot of people in Paris sort of thought after a while, maybe they're going a little too far with it, maybe we could dial it down. Obviously, those questions uh, resurfacing this evening. Uh, the other question, of course, is going to be the issue of counterintelligence, uh, counterterrorism, really. How, how can investigators go about stopping these kinds of things before they happen without the threat of, the threat of policemen on the streets? Uh, how, how, can, how can the intelligence community find people who might become perpetrators in the future? The French government has tried to go some way to, to expanding its own powers to try and track down those people. I think that in the months to come, we'll certainly be seeing much, much more of that. Kate Moody, we thank you. And we are going to continue to follow this Paris story throughout the program tonight.